Okay, here we go. So this is game number three between Tam and Kikhek. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that name correctly. And what a start is this? We see towers, we see petards, and we see some villagers. Uh, I see a lot of boards, deer, gold, stones. And first thing I notice, oh, again. Oh, this is the second time we're seeing this here. This is like the previous time. It was the first time we saw a land nomad start. And now we're seeing two land nomad starts by the same players. So it looks like red towers might be in a bit better position. Green towers are like all clumped together. But green could get a good town center up over here next to the gold and the deer and the two boars. Red. Hmm. Where should red place this town center? Maybe here on the wood and the gold and then the boars well, one board is close by, but then the other board is quite far away. Two petards. Oh my god, the petards. The petards could kill the lumber camp, but I think that they would get shut down by the towers. But I think it would be worth to go for it, right? Send the petards forward and try to kill like the lumber camp. Oh, that would be great to see. It seems like Red is splitting up his petards to scout around. Or yeah, he has one at home. Let's look the scouting from green. And now compare that to the scouting from red. Snow, grass, snow, dirt, ice, rip the grids. Yeah, I have the no snow mod on. I don't like all that snow. But yeah, just imagine a petard blowing up the slumber camp. Oh, that would be so great. Wait for them to make a town center and kill the foundation. That would also be great. But the timing on that would have to be perfect. And the players have not even found each other. Ooh, he's going in the right direction. He is going in the right direction, but it's already too late. It's already too late. The TC already has enough health. So yeah, what could you do, I think? Um, yeah, of course, you need to find your opponent in time to kill their town center or their lumber camp. So maybe I think it would just be a good idea to trade it versus a villager. If you can kill a villager without loom, that would be a good trade for the petards. Yeah, this, this is a bit of a waste since you cannot kill the town center with two petards. Maybe I could have tried to kill the sheep. That could have hurt, killing the sheep. And I don't like this town center placement. It's really secure with the towers, but it's going to be annoying for the wood villagers to cut since they have to go constantly around the tower. And now he also needs to make a mill for the deer. I mean, they're not that far away, but I would have preferred a TC over here next to the gold with this wood line and then closer to the deer. He also has quite, yeah, only one sheep underneath his town center, one over here. Meanwhile, red, look at how many sheep he has. Stole some from, from green and still has one, two, six, nine, nine sheep still left and more coming. Oof, that's going to be tough for green because I think green might already be struggling with the resources. It's already a villager behind. Let's look at his food count. Yeah, he's full on food at this point. But yeah, he should be fine. Just need to remind to send one villager to wood. Yeah, what he's doing now, so he has enough wood to make new houses. Okay, so it wasn't as bad as it looks. 
But these sheep yeah, really going to help Red out. Okay, so I think early game is over. Now we just need to wait until these players boom up a bit. I don't think we're going to see any aggression in the feudal or early castle age. So they're probably just going to FC boom a bit. And then we're going to see which civ is the strongest, Celts or Portuguese. Who do you prefer in this match? The only thing that Red did is towers are not really protecting his town center. So potentially Green could still come over and raid this area. Annoy the gold and the wood line. What's Portuguese? Uh, yeah, castle, unique units, probably not worth it. Celts, the unique unit, the water raiders, we could see that. We could see castle with the water raiders. I think that would be really strong since the map is quite open. Uh, what else could we see? Infantry from these civilizations, don't think, except for Celts, Portuguese, will have those strong hand cannons. And what's Red going to do? Red might go for a villager. Ah, it is. I can understand that they just use up the petards, but you could have used them for so much more. Like we saw in the previous game. Oh, this is actually good. Taking the shorefish instead of the deer. Then look at the shorefish here. That's really nicely spotted from green, since shorefish is one of the fastest ways to get food. But yeah, let's look through the tech tree a bit. So we have the Kelt player. So we get strong infantry. Uh, champion, probably not going to see it this game. Albadir might see it. Paladin, probably not. So, Kelt player, I think he should go for votes in this game. Go for votes, backed up by strong siege, siege ramps, and vote raiders. Mixed him with some halberdiers. And then Portuguese player will probably expect infantry from the Celts, so he should tack into hand cannons. But what's he going to back it up with? Hand cannons. Albadir as well, since organ guns are pretty useless. And he does not have good siege. Probably going to need bombard cannons in case the Celt player goes for siege onagers. Bombard cannon can counter the siege onagers. Yeah, Smush is also a possibility, Siege, Monks and Castle Age, but yeah, I'm probably not going to see this because of the towers. And this is a strange place to make a mill. Don't know if this was a mistake by Green. Yeah, there we go, he's removing it now. Probably was a misclick. Red's already on gold. Let's look at the resources from Red here. Yeah, he has enough food to click up to the fuel age. 600 food and 110 gold. 26 population. Two villagers more than green. Come on, click up. Still the boar here. Does he know about the boar? Oh, he's just spotting it. Just spotting the boar. Yeah. And still not clicking up. 27 villagers still not clicking up. There we go, no getting loom, and he's probably going to click up after he gets loom. Look at green resources, food also really strong. Going for barracks. Going for a barracks too on gold, and he's clicking up to the fuel edge and not getting loom. I think he should not have to worry about losing villagers with all the towers here. So I can agree, not getting loom. Villagers running around to take this swordfish. Instead of these here. Is it worth making a mill to shorefish? Well, we could make I don't know if you can dock here. But well, there's a lot of shorefish here which could be worth it to dock. It's an extra boar, which probably is going to survive survive the entire game. 
And then we have Rat luring the board towards the middle. That's, uh, yeah, it's not really a problem. And yeah, look at this, he's going with 3 on stone. So that's why he went up with only with 27 villagers. He's going fast castle and the castle drop into votes. I think this might be a good option for him. Since in Imperial Age, the Portuguese player can take into hand cannon, which will counter his infantry. So he's going to try and do damage in the castle age with some vote raiders. Go for a castle, vote raiders, siege. Could be strong. Okay, let's see here. Stable blacksmith. Stable blacksmith from green. Maybe he's going to attack into scouts. Or is he going to go to castle and make some knights? Like I said, the towers for red really far away. So an army from green could do some damage over here or at least idle the economy a bit yeah, it's just going castle I wonder if we will see some knights from green dropping down a lot more farms red on the way to castle as well uh, needs to send more to stone if he wants to get a castle. He has a lot on gold, a bit too much on gold, I think, compared to the amount of villagers on food and stone. Yeah, pretty slow game, as expected from a nomad start. Red, oh, actually, making here the barracks part of the wall, making the market, which is probably going to use the wall towards. Yeah, he's thinking ahead. Look at this blacksmith and house is also part of a wall. Yeah, he's really thinking ahead with his building placement. Green is looking a bit more, a bit more random. Two stable, two stables from Portuguese. So we're going to see. Quite a lot of castleage aggression. Two stables from the Portuguese player going knights, and then the Celt player trying to take into World Raiders. Two town centers, two town centers, two stables. Okay, and I don't know, knights versus Celts. True, they are a bit cheaper, but you versus Celts. If the Celts player attacks into pikemen, stronger infantry. And his base is quite secure, as you can see here. This side's completely walled off. There's a small gap over, over here. Let's check the fog for. Ooh, I think you should know there's a gap here. Since the path is going like this. I really hope and that he thinks this is closed. Cav archers? Kelt? Cav archers. That was something I was not expecting. And now the knights are coming in the towers, spotting the knights. Red, do some quick walls. Pull this off. Wall here. Oh, forgot about. Didn't see these placing a town center over here. And nice quick walls protecting the villagers. So we will get his town center up on this second stone. Okay, now he's going to the top end side with the knights. Probably run in through here. And already spearmen being created. This is open. Let's see, he's not going in. He's going to the top side first. Why is he not going in? 
Yeah, he spots it. Well, it doesn't seem like he wants to commit there. I think he's probably going to run around here in the back of this base. These two town centers are running. Red. Yeah, that one DC is a bit idle. Okay, getting the pikemen, so he should be able to quite easily defend versus the knights with Kelt pikemen. But yeah, also, I really thought he was going for the castle, which doesn't seem like he wants to do. And then, like I said, he had way too much on gold. Look at this gold count, 780 gold and almost no food. Ooh, nice job. Nice job. Just missed it. The snipe. The villager. And now, pikemen. In front, which means that the knights are going to have to run away. So, cat watcher still a strange decision. Let's see the cat He does get heavy cat watcher, of course. He doesn't get arbalest. And let's look at the range upgrades. Yeah, so in Castle Age he gets all the upgrades, but in Imperial Age of course no Archer Armor, no Bracer. Which means that they aren't the strongest Cav Archers in the Imperial Age. In the Castle Age they're still fine. Oh, not patrolling. Oh no, running straight into the night. Yeah, this one is almost dead and no husbandry for either players. LCA are terrible. Yeah, in Imperial Age, but in Castle Age, they do decent, right? I mean, you don't want to go Cavalry Archers versus Knights, of course, but they are decent. They are decent. Let's just keep it with that. And he's making a lot of Feigen. Yeah, with Party and Tactics, that's also another Imperial Age upgrade. And Bloodlines. If you want to go into Cav Archers, then you want to micro. Okay, let's look Tumbring. Yeah, also not Tumbring, yeah, that's that's the big upgrade that they're missing in the Castle Age. So party and tactics, of course, but you don't want to make Cav Archers in Imperial Age, since they don't have Bracer entering Archer Armor, but in the Castle Age they have almost everything. Except bloodlines, like you said. But I mean, you don't want to make too many of them, you just want to make a few, maybe run around and snipe some villagers. Try to avoid. And now here's the castle. Finally we see a castle. Interesting position, since it's not really protecting that much. You can say it's protecting the entrance to its base. But the knights, this is the important area here with the golds. Which he needs to secure, in my opinion. Cav Archers without Bloodlines are already useless. Well, Hank, you know why, why is that? That's because you don't have the 2k micro like some of the other players do. Red seems to be confident in his ability to micro those Cav Archers. He doesn't need the extra HP. But yeah, it's not like he's going like like three ranges cav archers like you see with huns and stuff he's just going one one archer range cav archers probably to i don't know pick off monks i don't know why why else would you make cav archers try to snipe some villagers yeah three town centers for green red still on two so green will get the economy lead, and green is also the player to be aggressive here. And it's strange to see that the Kelp player is the player that isn't going for siege. It's the Portuguese player that's making Scorpions and Mangonel. Scorpion, a good idea. Scorpions will do really well versus the Pikemen. But uh, Kelp, the Wout Raiders, they're so fast, and I feel like... 
if you micro them a bit, they will do really well versus the Scorpion. So now there's this hole here. There's this hole, which is so unfortunate for that that he didn't wall us. And now the knights are going to keep going inside all his armies over here. These knights could kill a few villagers. Red not noticing. Let's see. One villager down. Two down. Three down. Four down. Still no reaction. Okay, sending the pikemen back now. But he lost four or five villagers there. Oh, green. Run away. Run away with the knights, please. Oh, this is so hard to see. Look at those knights. Just get absolutely destroyed by the Celt pikemen. And now scorpions. But there's not enough scorpions here. There's not enough scorpions to deal with all these pikemen. Yeah, all the scorpions going down to pikemen. So, Scorpions, they do counter infantry, but you need a good amount of them. And, yeah, all the pikemen now, there are a lot of them are low HP, but he still has a huge number of pikemen. Green. Red on the way to Imperial. Ooh, red on the way to Imperial. And green. Ow, ow, ow. Look at green's food count. 161 food for green. He's not clicking up to the Imperial H anytime soon. And red with the Wood Raiders. And Pillage. I really hope he had in Siege though. Siege Halberdiers, Wood Raiders. It's going to be tough for Green to deal with in the early Imperial Age. I prefer Scorpion Pikes over Scorpion Monks. Well, of course, since Monks are the Micro and RNG. But pikes, if you don't have a good economy, it's hard to mass enough pikes. Uh, interesting castle position from green here. I don't know why it's putting it over here. It's not really... Yeah, it's protecting nothing, actually. Let's hope he walls this section off. Then there's only this entrance towards his base. So then the castle can be a bit useful, but... I don't know, I think you should have placed the castle maybe in the middle in the space. Because the castle, you're not going to make a unique unit. You don't really need it in the front end. I think it would maybe have been better if he placed it in the middle of his base to protect versus potential raids from the world traders. We see lots of boats, lots of pikemen here. Look at the army, 50 military for reds, 50 military. And he's going for mangonels. Mangonels will counter the scorpion as well. And they are Celt mangonels. But reds, ugh, this is the thing that you see a lot in these tournaments. Sorry. He reads the Imperial Age first. He has the army numbers. He has the potential upgrades as well. But he's just giving green time. He's given green time to get an Imperial Age himself. He's given green time to get archer ranges up and maybe tech into hand cannon. Look at this chemistry already coming in. And hand cannons will destroy everything that Red has here. I think Red waited a bit too long, maybe he needs to do damage now. He needs to do a lot of damage before Green can get the hand cannons out. Fort Castle, unfortunately, in a bad position because they will not be able to get inside here. <clears throat> Let's hope Red gets mangonels uh, on onagers. Sorry. Doesn't have the golds. A lot of woods. No gold, no food. Green zone economy, a lot of gold, a lot of wood, but no food for him. And you need food to make hand cannons. 
Unfortunately, Rat did not scout a lot to see. He doesn't know that this is all walled off with the wood lines. Let's see, Ford Siege Workshop, good idea. So, we see trebuchets. There we go, trebuchets. Could even take out the town center from this range. And there we go, the first hand cannons being out. And that's something, like I said, Rat waited a bit too long. Green was way later up to the Imperial Age, he had to get chemistry, and now he is massing up the hand cannons. You don't want Green to mass up the hand cannons. He needs to raid. He needs to raid the economy to prevent Green from getting food, so he cannot produce hand cannons. Making manuals, but you should get the onager upgrades. Try to get <clears throat> the resources for it. Maybe even sell the stone. Because he needs to do damage now. The longer the game goes, the better it will be for green here. Red needs to kill early. Let's see, now he's switched up. He's attacking the wall instead of the town center. That's a good idea. Go in, come on, send everything inside now. Go in. Everything. Pikemen, skirmishers, mangonels, swords. Let's see what he can do with his army. Keep in mind the army from green all the way in the top. Nothing to protect him here. Like I said earlier, it would have been better to place the castle here inside of his economy. Since the castle is doing nothing on that side. Come on, send in our army. Send in the pikemen. The wood's doing work. Look at this. TC down. A lot of villagers going down. Look at the bodies, man. Villagers going down everywhere. Come on, go, 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 go. Send, send everything. Why is this army here? Go. Yeah, these Woj Raiders are insane. And now all oh, trebuchet is out of position. He didn't send the pikemen forward. He might lose these expensive trebuchets. He's fighting Woj Raiders versus Knights, even though he has so many pikemen. Come on, man. Okay. Oh no, green, green. Oh, green, not patrolling. Green. Oh, look, these hand cannons. That was a really bad fight for green here. See this here? Yeah, more range in the front. But it's looking really good for red here. Even though green has hand cannons out, green does not have enough numbers. Look at the K death for issue 42 to 40. Quite even. Focus on the castle, he could kill the castle. Okay, using the skirms to kill the hand cannon, good move, and using the boats and pikemen on the knights. Needs to keep his trebuchets alive. And send the skirmishers a bit forward to deal with these hand cannons, but look at those hand cannons, they did so much work. Look at the boats, these are all the boats that are left. He lost so much of his army. Like I said, the longer the game goes, the better it will be for green. Now green made a castle here where I said it would. That's going down over the cannons to counter the trebuchets. And we did not see enough Celt Siege. No onagers. No siege rams. And red wasted his opportunity. I think green now had enough time. Still has a big enough economy. He has a good amount of hand cannon numbers. And now I feel green will start pushing back. And I don't know what red can do versus hand cannons and scorpion combo. Maybe some onager shots. Maybe if he gets onagers and he can get a good shot on those hand cannons. He's stacking into it now. Let's see here. See how this goes. Could get a potential good shot off. Right, low HP will die. 
7 range versus 7 range from the Manganel. Of course, if he gets Onager, the range will be a bit bigger. Let's see the front here. Yeah, but green, so many hand cannon numbers. And this population, look at that. Even after all those raids, he's still at 98 villagers. And he's just playing it safe. He's playing it safe, going back, using the bombard cannons to pick up the Onagers. And yeah, green is doing everything right here. Light cap to counter the skirmishers, hand cannons to counter the pikemen and the boat raiders, and bombard cannons to counter the onagers. Late in peril, there's not much that Celts can do versus Portuguese. Red has the opportunity, he had a big army, uh, didn't really tack into the correct unity, this was missing a bit of siege. I think if he went with onagers instead of Trebuchets, he could have cleaned the base even f faster. Oh, green. Green. Probably sent his bombard cannons the wrong way, and he's going to lose three expensive bombard cannons for free here. That's probably because of the wood line here that the units ran all the way around like this, trying to go to this side instead of just going here. It can happen. Happen with the pathfinding. Okay, look at this here. Nice, the light cap on the skirmishers. Ooh, on your shots. Killing a few hand cannons. Let's look at the micro from green. Oh, losing another bombard cannon. Losing another bombard cannon. Keep in mind these bombard cannons are so expensive. And look at the resources from red here. Huge resources. Green, not so much. Green, not so much resources as red. I think red needs a unit to raid here. It's going with capture ram, onager. Still no siege onager. Still no siege rams. Even though, yeah, he almost has one k foot to take into siege rams. He has a lot of buildings queued up. Also a lot of army doing nothing. More army, but it's not really fighting. He's letting his rams die to light calf. He should send his pikemen in. There we go, but the rams will already die before the pikemen reaches. Here on the front he's trading quite efficiently with the skirmishers versus the hand cannons. <clears throat> it's a the top there. Yeah, going Pikemen versus Hand Cannon. I mean, just not taking the best fights. Red is really not taking the best fights. Green is countering every unit he has, but as you saw, the Onagers can still kill so many units there since these players, like, we're not watching pro plays here. These players are a bit lower rated, so the micro is not as incredible as we used to see in some tournaments. Just to be expected. Everybody can make some mistakes. And when you're facing hand, when you're facing onagers, one onager can kill your entire army if you're not paying attention. But I think Green did a good job adding in so many light caps to pick off the onager and the skirmishers. resources, a lot of stone, a lot of gold, not really making a lot of units. A lot of buildings queued up, but they're dying as soon as they pop out. And yeah, the game is going more and more towards green here. Green just needs a bit more siege to push in. It's only making bombard cannons. Yeah, he's taking good fights. This is going to get cleaned up. He's going to push in further here. And it's looking really, really good for him. He's getting raided by Pikemen. Don't know if he has noticed this. 
not sending anything to address that. Let's have some hand cannons here. Ah, there we go. Now we're sending the hand cannons over to the with the pikemen raids. Losing these expensive hand cannons to the arrow fire from the castle. Look at all the line here. Hand cannons at the King villagers battle for green, idle uh, military battle for green, kill death ratio battle for green. It's only a matter of time here. Yeah, I think Red's plates. Well, he played pretty well, but he just wasn't able to do enough damage in time. And late Imperial, like I said, nothing that Celts can do versus Portuguese. GG. Which means that Tem will win. And will advance to the next round in this tournament. Let's check the achievements. I think... Yeah, look at the kill death. Just because Green's units hard countered the units from Red Air, he had such a huge army. But he yeah, didn't really push hard enough. I think he should focus on getting Onager Siege Ram a bit sooner. And then he could have done more damage to the base of green 